If Elden Ring has a second main character, it's gotta be Nefeli. She's there for your first fight with a shard bear. She's tied to Gideon Ofnir, and she even shows up at the end of the game to help you with Papa Lou himself. If the Tarnished never got dropped into Limgrave, could Nefeli have handled things all by herself? Today we find out. And because you don't have to beat a single shard bearer to get her equipment, this is basically a secret starting class. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We find new ways to play the game all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. We just put up a new video there that's exclusive for Patreon subscribers. And hey, make sure you like and subscribe on this video. Will it make your dad treat you better? No, but it won't make him treat you worse. Now, let's start the storm. We start things off as a champion, which means we're already wearing the outfit we need for Nefeli. Have a little early lore, sickos. Headband reserved for the Badlands' bravest. Proof that the wearer has slaughtered countless foes. Following the example of their chieftain, Horlu, the brave warriors of the Badlands shun excess adornment. All of the other armor pieces basically have the same description. Horlu said sun's out, gun's out, and everyone in the Badlands agreed. Definitely didn't share the lore to hide the fact that I almost fell off off right at the beginning, no siree. Fix the jump button from the Dark Souls 4 video and just rush into the grafted scion. Nefeli wouldn't run. You win this round, buddy, but we'll be back soon enough. Limgrave time. We'll be lord here someday, but for now, crafting kit because we can eat pickles again. We could in Dark Souls 4, but I forgot rusted coins were a thing. Uh, whoops. Oh god, Nefeli really is the perfect Elden Ring protagonist. We get a horse, we get the wet blade, and we'll make this axe the Stormhawk at home with Storm stomp as our ash of war it's a lot worse than the stormhawk ash of war but as you're gonna find out later most things are what's the opposite of an omen a nemo yeah, that's a Nemo of things to come. Zoom on up to the Stone Sword Key and the Strength Boosting Tier, which will be helpful early on. Our future axes scale quality style, Strength and Dexterity, but a little more with Strength. I'll need the Physic Flask for that, and yeah, I can use it today. God, it's nice to play Elden Ring like Elden Ring. Trip to the Dragon Barrel, grab some Somber Nines and Eights on the way to some Boxing Gloves. Sure, we could sprint to get the Nefeli stuff, but we need stats for the axes anyway. Might as well grab those by pounding the Bad Dragon with a pickle. That's enough for all the stats we need and a comfortable early amount of vigor. Now Nefeli has two axes, but we have one. The round table hold sells a second one, and with those two, we can be wish.com Nefeli Lou. It's just as good if you don't care about what the word good means. Margit time, he's still our first boss technically, and the only one stopping us from getting those sweet, sweet axes. We have a little extra health, but that's about it, and these axes haven't been leveled up. They'll still provide a little preview of our basic moveset, power stance axes. Looks really cool. The jump attack's pretty effective, but two handing's just kind of better than one handing. We get a stance break right next to the cliff, but you just can't get this guy off. Phase two, it's like the circle button is broken in our house. Oh well, that's what 36 vigor is for. We finish things off by jumping in and smacking him with another little extra bonk. Good stuff. Gostok and Nefeli are kind of chummy. Maybe not chummy, but she works with him. You exist because we allow it. Danger path, and then we run into an imposter. Spaghetti Lou. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Now this is a fight. I actually played this run a little bit on my own, and Storm Stomp worked wonders. Today, not so much. Ideally, it should just stun her into our hits over and over again, but she keeps breaking out of it, and her Storm Ash of War is so much better. Obviously, we're gonna cover that in a bit, but against an NPC or an NP me? The Whirlwind Poise just locks us in, and we can't get through that storm cycle. Several times we get really close to dying, but I'm not taking an L from a sussy imposter. No. Axe is acquired. Let's check that lore. Battle axe designed to resemble a hawk, with its wings comprising the blade. Signature weapon of warriors who strive to remain one with the storm, despite being so far from their place of birth. Their hearts are proud, and thereby easily undone. Okay, I don't know how to say this. The blade doesn't look like wings at all. The the backside looks like a beak, that's funny, but the blade part doesn't look like a wing. They goofed. I guess we'll still try. 
Let's go right to Lernia. Lots of water there. It should be a good place to test our lightning axe. First thing we fight is Boggart, and he dies to one spin combo. I mean, to be fair, this axe is already plus five. Wait, no, it's plus zero? Okay, well, our stats are cracked. So wait, well, hold on. We only have the bare minimum stats. How's this hitting so hard? Time to learn. Lightning Grease adds 85 lightning damage to each hit. The Thunderstorm Ash of War adds 120, almost 50% better. While that's happening, the wind also has a hitbox, but there are seven hits from the axe in one combo just lightning that's 840 damage early game we call that a shitload of damage right to the alberneric village and there's someone in trouble here being bullied by a perfumer nefeli doesn't need perfume she's got musk and that's probably why her best friend is a bird i love nefeli but i don't think any of the loos smell good sadly the old man dies anyway we can't save everyone after the bridge jump we head to smarag and i'm not running from a dragon unless he keeps running away from me why are you running why are you running? Look, I'm always down for a fight, but I'm not gonna let someone waste my time. In the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, we can show the axe off even more. You know how the Stone Digger miners have huge resistances? Well, if you turn on 120 lightning damage, that only gets cut down to like 60, also known as half their goddamn health. There's a bunch of somber stones, one, two, and three on the way down, a two of each. Is that a bunch? The spin knocks the crystallion down, its stance breaks immediately, and then it dies. That's the whole fight. It's never hard, but sometimes it's so easy it's funny. Just around the corner, we can run past the Sauron Tower, go a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and grab the Grace. Not like we need it. We're fighting an Erdtree Avatar, and they're not gonna kill us. Unless the first explosion of Elden Stars knocks me down and then pushes me into a wall to get deleted by lasers. That is exactly what happened. Good thing I got the grace then. Attempt two, I think it's worth noting just how much extra damage the lightning is putting on the axe. Singular axe. My one issue with the Stormhawk axe is clearly you're supposed to use two of them. They drop two at a time from Nefeli in the castle or Nefeli when her quest is done, but the Ash of War doesn't work on both of them. Why not? That'd be cool. Oh well. Beating this Erdtree Avatar will give us the lightning physics here, turning our 120 extra lightning damage per hit into 144. Truly a gross amount of damage. Ensha invades, and I'll level with you gamers. I kind of forgot he was going to do that. Famously a pretty pathetic fight. How do you think he does? Bad. Let's go get some money. The abandoned cave isn't an issue, even with this bare bones armor set. The clean rots are a gank, and we don't have any help. Other than two axes. Yeah, just a couple of spins. The first one's dead. Were you blocking? We don't care. Number two is a zoner, and we're out of magic. But that extra 144 lightning damage doesn't play around. You shouldn't play around with electricity either, unless it's low voltage and your partner wants to. Time to mix things up. Nefeli is going to sort out her mommy issues by climbing the ruin strewn Oedipus. How could Nefeli have mommy issues? She's never even met her mother. There are a couple of somber stone fours here we can grab, so I'll make this our path to Altus instead of the Dectus piece. That unfortunately does mean we can't imagine Nefeli in Fort Height. What happened to you, man? Used to be cool. I'm still cool. Nah. You've changed, man. I'm still getting pickles before boss fights. That's the same. Collectively, it takes two spin cycles for nerd juice and patches. One for nerd juice, wee, and one for patches, wee, again. Makar gets the spin on the face, but he won't stop stomping around. We roll through a few of his super slow sword attacks, then get a stance break. It's basically over by the time phase two starts. Lightning was the best tool to beat dragons in Dark Souls 1. Is it still? I don't know. Seems pretty good here. I'm not looking it up. I'm not a dork. Wow, Altus is beautiful. Let's get out of here. What do I see being big roadblocks for Nefeli? Um, maybe Melania. But I've I've heard there are rumors that this kind of fucking messes up Melania. The Ash of War. I doubt it, but you never know. It's time to go for round two with the Grafted Scion. Warp through the Taco Bell fries and get ready to throw hands with a guy who has too many hands. A little issue here. We don't have as much super armor on the first few spins, so if we can't poise chain a boss, he can hit us out of our spins. I have to, like, wait out an attack to punish it? Disgusting. That's not what I signed up for. One good spin finishes him off, though, and we can get the Stormhawk King. 
From the description, Ashes of a hawk revered by all others as sovereign back in the days when Stormvale's winds still raged like no other. This ancient monarch is proud, however, refusing to answer anyone's summons. Wait, it's an ash we can't summon? That sucks. Stormhawk King boss fight for the Shadow of the Earth Tree, though? I feel like the Badlands should be in there somewhere. Oh well. Right next door, we can grab Dean from the description. Spirit of the fierce hawk that faithfully rendered lifelong service to the old king of Stormvale long ago. When the true storm raged, its cry emboldened its fellows in battle and the tempestuous winds that encircle it shred through foes yeah um the important part is when it's uh it's cries embolden its fellows in battle just pay attention to that jot that down that's important anyone else think it's weird that nefeli doesn't go to the radon party does gideon send anyone but you to this encha's not there either i guess we know why he's not there radon uh let's go make some friends and charge forward you don't need to back up to start the melee phase if you're just a giga stacy like nefeli it takes a second but i know we gotta wait for him to make the first wrong move. Big jump attack, there it is. Let's start spinning. That's a good trick. And now we'll just keep finding windows to get in here and there. Like during his super slam, except Alex blocks me. He's simply too large of a lad. Radon lands as a meteor and summons more. It's a great window to hit him. Then he just does melee attacks. No problem. I meet with EG before doing some very stupid shit, honestly. Uh, okay, the correct routing, if you're doing a Nefeli any percent speed run, is to go through the end of the Lake of Rot. Do not go to Volcano Manor early. I will explain why a little bit later. For now, talk to Raya, give her that necklace from earlier. Wanna see me fight Gilka? Wanna see me do it again? I can't, we have to hit NG+. Raya will now meet with us in Altus to take us to a second location. If you meet someone who wants to take you to a second location, do it! What's the worst thing that could happen? You get murdered? Fun fact, 0% of murder victims have ever complained about it. Volcano Manor has some somber stones, a 6, woohoo, a 5, a who. But then to get the 7, we have to go through the Godskin Noble, something we would be doing eventually. Anyway, that it'd be much better if we did it with more damage. Now keep in mind, we usually beat up a putrid avatar for more levels. We usually beat up Grail for more levels. Didn't do that this time. So when we fight the Godskin Noble and can't just spam the L2 button, How could this happen to me? the axes don't do slashing damage. They do standard damage. That's actually another small issue I would change about them. And one that would really help us against the Noble. Really, we're just struggling to break this dude down. And phase two starts with the rollout. So all that pressure we built up in phase one is gone. Rapid stab it lets you pick which hits you dodge but you only get to dodge two of them and there are 12. by the time we get our first stance break our health is low enough that we die to counter hits while we were spinning Ugh. come back again pick up the runes just for my own sanity the first spin we get hit i'm prepared to trade for the weapon buff i'm more focusing on charged attacks than power stanced attacks since those aren't really doing much absolutely terrible roll during the phase transition so he goes for the rollout and we just heal off and wait it out while all the pressure resets then rapid thrust again this move sucks thrust me <laughs> like trust me good joke me good that was, that was a good one uh yeah the champion set is losing its luster here we need to get that ritual shield talisman to actually be able to take a hit after another crit he rolls out and we lock him into a column then use the wind box to kill him cheese we'll use cheese so now we head through the rest of the manor but this is only good routing if you only need one somber weapon if you're gonna use two go underground first we took an extra death because the albern eric on the elevator apparently i was standing right on the edge but then i sent it down somehow okay there's only one somber stone seven on the secret path that's enough for one axe underground you get two somber sevens that's enough for two axes i don't know how to count on to part four I'm headed straight for the castle. They wanna make me Carry a manor time, Godfrey could carry a manor, but you know Nefeli's right behind him stretching to get the next attempt. Do we call Loretta a boss fight? Lightning is great. Only a couple bosses heavily resisted and nothing makes it weaker. Water makes it stronger. One spin for Loretta, bye bye. We don't get to kill Celibus. We gotta keep the Ronnie quest going, the optional quest that is mandatory. But since there is Nefeli lore in the Celibus quest, let's check out that puppet. One of Celibus's favorite puppets used to summon the spirit of Nefeli Lu. Puppet of a warrior who was betrayed by her pure heart wields a stormhawk axe in both hands and uses the thunderstorm skill a diamond in the rough deserving of special care lest its potential be squandered nefeli lu truly was a warrior if i ever have to read one of celibus's favorite puppets again i'm gonna throw up in my mouth i love that the item description makes you feel properly guilty if you gave nefeli the potion which you should feel 
feel bad about. Now imagine being so close to Fortite, but not going in. We fight the Mimic, it's an NPC, spin, 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 then grab a Somber 5, head in deeper, light some torches, and fight Godric. That's not that boss you light torches for. Sometimes my brain does this pretty cool thing where I get distracted by other tasks and jump all around. If your brain does that, ask your doctor if you might be pretty cool. Yeah, so let's fight Godric. Apparently he's been putting his taint on the winds. There's better ways to cool off, my guy. His winds don't have lightning, neither do his axes. The earthquake is super effective at breaking our lightning chain, but then he just does a silly jump. By the time we start phase two, it's done. He doesn't even stop dragging his dragon around. That means we can activate his great rune for plus five to every stat. Should be a big help. It's really the only good thing you get for killing Godric. Next up, Moose Snow, Raya Lucaria. Here's what actually happened. I wanted to do the fastest things on my to-do list, so when I got lunch, during the stream, it wouldn't seem like I slipped that far behind. Is the wolf fast? Yeah, we don't really even have to dodge attacks. I just start spinning and wait for it to jump into us. Overall, I think we hit it three total times. But remember, I'm bad at counting. Moongrim is smart enough to avoid our quitting out, but he can't parry Thunderstorm? Why not? The player Ducky Dance can get parried, but the Thunderstorm can't. These rules don't make sense to me. Rinala gets one storm in phase one, but unfortunately she can use super armor to fly away in phase two. I'm just gonna ignore the Bloodhound Knight and charge in, who cares? We only need like one more hit. That is a speedy Raya Lucaria, literally five minutes. Moose, it jumps up, then it runs away. I'm trying to trade hits, but it's hard. Then it teleports to the other side of the world. Hoof it over to that hoofy boy, it jumps, we twist, it dies. Okay, Ronnie, I'll give you this knife, but only if you promise to stab Celavis with it. I like to imagine that's what she actually wants the knife for. Not a ritual to destroy the greater will or whatever. Literally just stabbing Celavis like he's a shish kebab. Incel River Main and this Estelle Jr. drops a Sombra 7. Along with the other Sombra 7 we get from this chest. That'd be all we need. Then we'd also have the Ghost Glove Wart. We need for our bird. Level it up and we'd be able to fight the noble with a bird and plus two nine axes. That would have been better. There's even a Sombra 8 in the Lake of Ra. So with another Sombra 9 in the Dragon Barrel, two plus nine axes. Estelle is our first fight with the Dean, who starts every fight by giving you a 20% damage buff that lasts for 30 seconds. It's just a physical buff though. I wish it was on the lightning too. Honestly, we're gonna lose most of that time just running in and then running out for the bongos. But when he goes for the tail stab, that's a free win because it's a free spin. And a free spin? That's a free win. It's true because it rhymes. Valiant Gargoyles next. We get the first one on the water as it goes for the poison. Probably should have pulled away, but what if I just kept spinning until it died? Second one comes in and it ends the first poison to go for a second poison. Yikes. But when it decides to switch weapons, it's standing still long enough that we can spin away the entire health bar. Rest in spaghetti, get rocked by Nefeli. Some ants in the deep root depths for the rune arcs. Don't think we'll need them, but it's nice to have them and not need them rather than need them and not have them. Fius Champs next, they're NPCs on water. How did you think this was gonna go? Roger actually has a little sliver, but slivers are worms, and Dean loves eating worms. I wanted to focus on Lionel, but I guess I did Jack Skellington instead. Next one gets rocked, then Lionel gets rocked. Not the order I was trying to do, but hey, we're rocking. Rikard kills us once, then we kill him. Moving on, Royal Capital. This Erd Tree avatar doesn't stun lock us into Elden Stars Jr., so we just get to win. That's nice. Finally, we get the Ritual Shield Talisman, which will boost our defenses up by 30% when we're at full health, and it means we can take a single hit and heal. Our armor is still bad after that, but at least the first hit is more manageable. Time to fight the Godfrey Shade or for Novelli Ghost Dad, like that movie with, oh, never mind, trying to even reference Ghost Dad. That's my ghost bad. We do a bad job and it still goes fine. Get hit by everything, get into a healing spiral. Doesn't matter because every single hit just melts that ghost's health bar down. He hits hard, we hit harder, big win. And there's a pocket for the ritual shield. Hey Phil, why did you just grab another pocket when you killed your second shard bear? Because shut up, it's Morgoth time. He sent that stinky illusion to Limgrave. And if a dude fucks with Limgrave, Nefeli digs him grave, digs him a grave. We, uh, we kill him. Our damage is so so crap, we get grabbed, but who cares? That's what the vigor is for. Dean also does a great job of distracting so we can come in and jump. The fight was so fast, we didn't even need another pickle. I still ate one, because sometimes it's uh, it's just nice to have a snack. Let's turn our damage up even higher.
For Biden lands time, it's important to remember when playing someone from the bad lands that borders are a symbol of humanity's failure as a species. Wahoo! It's the mountaintops of the giants. Castle's whole first, we're sprinting for the fastest somber stone tens we can grab. But that sprint is getting me a little too tilted on the stick, so uh, Niall kills us. To be fair, I didn't think his halberd could do that much damage. Okay. Run it back! Power stancing is so based, but I still gotta go for the power stancer first. Then the shield guy. So, it's already solo now. Right after the phase transition, he does his Omega attack, and I just greet in. Have you learned nothing? No, I never needed to. We win. We have the other piece of the Dectus Medallion because we respected the Albert Eryx. They've been through enough, and they deserve our protection and respect. If you're kind to them, they'll be kind to you. Like my future. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> I hope you liked that clip, because she emptied the clip on me. Anastia gets a spin. Penguin Noble, more like Peng Spin than Noble. How far away from Sanguine can we get before it stops making sense? Am I just a babbling fool? Mogwin has another somber stone, but before we do it, let's go get our fourth sacred tier. That isn't enough. I haven't taken the time out to do the extra errands. No easy dragon barrel bosses, no weeping peninsula field trip, but hell, let's go get the sacred tier and Eleonora. Then we get the Eleonora tier. That should make Mog easier. On the other side of the dark cave, we storm some frogs before their bodyguard proceeds to combo us with such relentless force, we die. Hey gamers, you want that somber stone 10? Just run around the back, Get a free golden rune 13, and the Sanguine Noble will be stupid and fall off the dais. That's a dais, right? That's what a dais is? I think it's a dais. Tell me in the comments if it's not a dais. Moog ends up being the biggest pain for this run. Yes, yeah, spoilers, it's worse than Melania. Let's try to figure out why. Issue 1. We're less than level 100, and this boss is meant for like 120 or higher. Well, Tulak, I beat Moog with a toothbrush at level negative 10. Shut up. I'm happy you're good at the game. But if you're bare fisting Moog, maybe the tips aren't for you. Yeah, level 120 is probably what's recommended. We're missing damage, endurance, and vigor we'd have in a final build, which also means bleed stacks up faster on us. Also, the champion's tattered skirt and bikini top are surprisingly ineffective at preventing blood loss. We're also still rocking the power stance axes, and as based as power stancing is, it ain't good. Two-handing a weapon boosts the stance damage and just the damage damage of the weapon. Considering Thunderstorm doesn't even buff both weapons, why would you power stance these? And we just got plus four flasks. Yeah, that's not okay. Go to the Weeping Peninsula past Phil. It really isn't that bad though. The wall of Moog in this run is four deaths. If our biggest wall is four deaths against Moog below level 100, That'd be a great day for me. Fifth attempt, everything comes together. Bird squacks, we focus on dodging. Number one tip for every boss, don't focus on hitting, focus on dodging. Speaking of, Dean pushes Moog out of the way for a fire punch, making him whiff. He hit us with the get down, Mrs. President, and we get a crit before phase two. That's enough time for some spinning, and in phase two, Dean says, I really can't do a lot, but I can be annoying. And that's all we need. Those little windows into Moog through the Splatoon juice. We get in a stance break and then just one spin combo. We really just needed one full combo without the extra defense he gets during the phase transition. Back to the main storyline, we get two free sacred tears on the way through the mountaintops of the giants. Why didn't we do this first? I am an idiot. But I don't have a box and a screwdriver. I have two axes and they're soaked in lightning. Fire Giant drops his avalanche. We whiff the first spin, but that second one, I'm sorry, do these axes have bleed or something? Good Lord. Phase two right away. Spin on that hand and hit him so hard that he does the breath attack. I wasn't ready for that. Kills the horse. Ooh. Spin up some wins on the mad taint. Weren't we mad at Gondrick for doing that? Anyway, that's a boss. And we're at a weird amount of runes, so let's go grind against one putrid avatar. Grinding on a putrid avatar is a great way to get levels and VD. One stance break, then a spin combo. That's the highest level putrid avatar, but we don't care. I'm not dying to something silly like that. Anyway, I died on the chain. I should be allowed to look at chat without the ramp pushing me off. It's boring. Put a railing up. Seriously? How did they get permits for that? That's irresponsible. That OSHA violation leads into OSHA nightmare land. Pharaoh Missoula really puts the ah in OSHA. This Godskin duo fight is a perfect example of how I like to get down to business. Sloppy and with a friend. Bernie's gonna get the fight started. We try to spin, but it just kind of pushes us into the big fire. Not great. Bernie's kind of getting sauced and tossed before he heals himself with weapon ash. I beefed it on the noble transition again, but then we can use the size of our whirlwind to hit the chunky mid rollout before getting hit by 
by, oh, just every stray hit from the Apostle. With that charge attack, land the jump attack, and finish it off with just enough time for a 2v1. The Noble does a 180 on his fist slam attack, and we get a stance break inside the Black Flame ritual, so I'm not sticking around for the crit because I don't want to get hit by the Black Flame. Then he cheats with the rollout. The columns are purely decorative, again sloppy but we get it done time to raise the voltage by using alex in the wailing dooms then in the hot tub i know he forces us to run around just like fia and ronnie but i'm not mad about it for two reasons number one it actually is optional you don't have to do it if you're in a hurry and two the reward is possibly the best talisman in the game instead of like fighting four to sacks for a hundred thousand runes and two lightning spells that aren't good Oh, we killed the magma worm on the way. Alex's quest is cool. You get to fight him at the end. I love that. I don't love the bird run. Nefeli wouldn't hurt any of the birds, but much like the Albert Eriks, they still want me dead. Malaketh has holy damage. We have lightning. Lightning's just better. Hard to find windows to make a storm, but oh no, no but. This just kind of sucks. We waste almost all of our flasks while he runs away in phase one. Phase two, just break his stance and spin one time. He earned that spanking. Did you know that Nefeli has two dads, one bad dad, one Chad dad, and we'll fight them back to back. Generally, when someone has two dads, they're front to back, or at least front to front. Back to back seems, I mean, fine, whatever two dads like to do. Dean buffs us up and we start spinning. Hey, Gideon, remember when you told the Tarnish they could turn me into a doll and sell me to Selvis for a fucking Glenstone fucking ice crag? Not even Night Comet. This is your punishment. You're a bad dad. The only bad thing about the Gideon fight is you can only kill him once. There's a few sacred tears we can grab and it's long overdue. One by Millicent who doesn't fight us and one by Vike who we managed to beat even though he's using Vike's war spear. The best weapon in the game. Well, maybe it's just bad at PvP. Chad dad now, and what makes this Chad dad so rad? Look at him. He's stomping, we're jumping. Hey, where's the stance break? Why is a bird getting hit with earthquakes? There's a lot of strange shit happening here. Phase two, we avoid the grabs and no, seriously, where's the stance break? The damage is still good, but I feel like I'm staying aggressive. We're using heavy and jump attacks. We don't get a single one. I guess that's because this is a quality weapon and stance breaks are warranted with strength. Time to fight God with the power of the storm. Bring it on, Radagon. He brought it. Okay, I'm starting to think Godfrey's strategy of fighting in a loincloth might actually be a little dangerous. Attempt number three, trade a storm with the ritual shield boost. He goes for the cone, that's a stance break. Nefeli really is a glass cannon. Lots of damage, not much defense. The hammer slammer gets pointed at the bird, so it's easier to avoid. And then we just gotta wait for a few more openings to move on to the Elden Beast. It's on some big, 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 big water. So lightning hits even harder, like yowza, look at that damage. Immediately goes for the big ring and our big wing is still alive for a second the bird died honestly the big damage probably just made this fight more annoying the elden beast is playing super defensive just running away after we get hit by the big explosion it does some melee attacks then tries to get elden stars going and time to float yeah we stop it with a stance break then one big storm combo plus a little crit does 30 percent of his health Good lord. Sometimes bad stance pressure doesn't ruin stance breaks, it just delays them. And in this case, that was a very good thing. Getting the stance break right before Elden Stars. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Blissigious Axe is first on cleanup duty. The Lightning Dragon doesn't actually have crazy high lightning defense and aims the lightning at the Dean. Questionable hitbox with that claw slash, but we've been hitting so regularly because we haven't had to avoid the lightning that we get a stance break for a little more damage. Love starting the teleport phase with the camera whipping away from the giant dragon someone in the comments really defended lock on and flipping the camera around being on the same button and sweetie i love fromsoft too but if you love something you have to admit when it has faults if you're just lying to yourself and saying it's perfect you're not loving it for what it truly is anyway put plassie in the wall spin to win we're the storm queen and our king is rodrika or our pet bird if rodrika doesn't want to be called a king i haven't talked to her about it Liturgical Town and Nefeli might not kill Albert Eriks, but I will. Haleg Tree, Swag Jump, Loretta is weakest to lightning damage, probably because she's carrying a big metal stick, wearing metal armor, and sitting on a horse covered in metal. Very cool, but also very ouch. She only has 80 stance, can't crit her, but even our axe can hit that. She's got a sliver left, but again, slivers are worms, and Dean is hungry, bone apple teeth. 
Sometimes I forget to do 40 snacks, but I didn't today. Yada yada, study hall, yada yada, hug Fia. Why can't 40s spells be good? Literally just switch Ancient to Dragon Lightning Strike and Fortisax's Lightning Spear. I'd be annoyed that I have to do this for Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, but at least it would make coming here worth it. 100,000 runes and the choice of Death Lightning, which doesn't work well anywhere. It's not even good in PvP or just worse Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. Those are your options. Sick. 40 actually does have 80% lightning resistance, but our axes deal some decent physical damage. Actually, since the buff is a flat 120 lightning, they've been dealing more physical damage for a while now. That lightning buff is just gravy, but I'm not gonna say no to gravy. Only one boss left. Through LFL, get that great shield talisman, and hey, now our physical defenses are actually okay, kind of. Melania time. Let's back up, summon the bird, get that buff, and see if this Ash of War really does fuck her up like people said it does. First spin breaks her stance. I've been complaining about the stance pressure of this weapon the entire run. What? We're on the water, and the wind poise chains her to take the whole combo? Maybe that's it? She just doesn't have time to recover? A full combo knocks her over, and we're in phase two. I'll just, uh, I'll just let this play. Honey? You've got a big storm coming. Yeah, so those rumors that this Ash of War fucks up Melania? Well, to quote Fleetwood Mac, Rumors? No, that's all true. Yeah, as it turns out, maybe Nefeli should have been the main character of Elden Ring. At five hours and 19 minutes, we beat 35 bosses and died 13 times. A lot of those deaths were just silly mistakes on my end. That's my fault. This goes right behind the Bloodhound Knight in S tier, and we really didn't do any extra grinding for it. A flat 120 buff to the weapon shreds through the early game, but doesn't really fall off that hard in late game either. Remember, it's 144 with a lightning tier. Hell, 158 with Ritual Sword Talisman on a weapon that swings pretty fast, but also has around like 600 damage damage on its own? Honestly, all this needs is some heavier armor, which it definitely has the endurance for, and maybe just leave the second Stormhawk axe at home? You only need one. This build doesn't really need much help to be great. Try it out on your next playthrough. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon. We just added a new exclusive video over there. Follow me on Twitch to watch these streams live. We'll find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time, and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video.